What was the news conference in Houston, the first since the trouble developed with Apollo 13 at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time last night now, some four hours ago, and which has caused a cancellation of any plans to land on the moon and has uh, developed into a critical situation for the astronauts as they must go to a backup uh, emergency system to get around the moon and back on the way home safely. The conferees you heard there were Christopher Kraft, the deputy director of the Manned Spacecraft Center, uh, an astronaut, James McDivitt, who's now the Apollo program manager in Houston, and Sigurd Schoberg, the director of flight operations. Uh, Christopher Kraft said that this is as serious a problem as we have ever had in space, but he said the chances are excellent uh, for the safe recovery of the astronauts if the LEM continues to work well, the lunar landing craft, which is still attached to the command module and whose power uh, they will need uh, to uh, get uh, around the moon and back on the way home. He says, uh, Chris Kraft, at this conference that it is a safe situation at the moment. He has confidence in the astronauts, of course. They have plenty of oxygen in the lunar module for the entire uh, trip that would get them back home now on uh, Friday around noon uh, if they land in the Pacific a little earlier if it is decided to land them in the Atlantic, although uh, Mission Control clearly would prefer to land in the Pacific where the helicopter carrier ship, the Iwo Jima, is uh, waiting and has been on station for some time for the planned uh, return from the moon. There is no recovery ship in the Atlantic, we learned tonight, although NASA earlier had said that for launch at least, a destroyer, the USS New, was in the Atlantic in case of a launch abort. Presumably it has left its station now. An Atlantic uh, uh, recovery would be a little southwest of that bulge of South, uh, of South America, uh, southwest, that is, of Recife, uh, Brazil. The, uh, the uh, interesting possibility was raised at this news conference that the cause of the difficulty could have been that the spaceship was hit by a meteoroid. This has always been considered a possible danger in space, but uh, it had been pretty well uh, dismissed as man had ventured further out there and had uh, finally gone to the moon four times successfully before this trip. But uh, it does seem that there was an explosion. Something violent took place in the uh, service module, uh, that is the large tank-like uh, section behind the command module where the fuel cells are located, and uh, it caused a venting of oxygen. Uh, this uh, could sounds as if something broke through the uh, skin of the service module to cause that uh, venting, and. Uh, the suggestion has been made and not been knocked down by NASA yet that it might have been a meteoroid strike. However, there are a lot of tanks under considerably high pressure in that service module that also could have uh, exploded, uh, causing this uh, considerable emergency. They will apparently have communications throughout this uh, trip. Uh, there and back, despite the fact they will go in a powered down uh, configuration, that is, they'll use as little power as they possibly can, but uh, they will not power up their strongest antenna, and communications may be a little bit spotty. Uh, Level is reporting now that he cannot see stars out of the LEM windows because the windows are covered with debris, <coughs> presumably from the mishap. Uh, now, if, uh, how serious that could be, since uh, it means that, uh, I suppose, his problems of alignment now become a little bit more difficult, don't they, uh, Wally? Uh, he was going to perhaps have to align the platform of the spacecraft uh, for the firing uh, by sighting on the stars. Well, this, this is uh, the, the crudest way of aligning. That's looking through the windows at no star patterns, but uh, looking through the optical device uh, would be the next check, and I don't, I don't understand what he's really saying there. Uh, obviously, we can't go out and turn on the, the, the duty windshield wipers. We do it in an automobile to clear the window. So uh, I, I, I have to think this one over a bit to see what he's going to do to the line. You know, uh, we have, uh, for the first time on this flight, I think, uh, fortunately, as circumstances turn out, a uh, 
a, a network uh, correspondent in Mission Control who can report to us the mood and the attitude and the feelings there at this time of uh, rather considerable crisis. Uh, our correspondent is Roy Neal. He's been inside Mission Control uh, right along this evening since the crisis developed at 10 o'clock, and here he is. Control. We have learned that a group of astronauts are at the moment working in a simulator here at the Manned Spacecraft Center, trying to duplicate the conditions of the men out in space, trying to find out in particular if the men can see stars, for if they can, some power can be saved aboard the lunar module by using stars for aligning the computer. If not, that power would have to be used, and power at the moment is the critical factor aboard the lunar module. Conservation of power is the big thing that they're talking about here. The controllers are working... CBS News Space Center. Uh, we have with us Leo Krupp, the test astronaut engineer for North American Rockwell, uh, and who's been with us on all of these uh, Apollo flights and many flights before that. Leo, I'm wondering, I think uh, most of our viewers probably heard most of that news conference uh, by now, and we there were some rather technical questions raised that maybe you could help us with. Uh, if we could go back through a couple of the notes I made here. Uh, one thing they talked about was the lithium hydroxide, which seemed to be a uh, the only critical factor in providing oxygen. They have uh, apparently do not have enough uh, lithium hydroxide in the uh, uh, lunar module. They're going to have to depend on the command module for part of that. Lithium hydroxide, we know, is the uh, purifier, the filter uh, through which they take out the carbon dioxide in the air and recirculate it for oxygen. But uh, uh, how is it contained, and what does this mean, having to work back and forth to the command module, and, and does the electrical power affect that supply? Well, while they have the environmental control system in the command service module powered down to conserve the power, so this means that they're utilizing the, the lunar module environmental control system. Now, the lithium hydroxide canisters that we have in, in the command module take the, the air, the oxygen that's being used in the command module for the, the uh, crew to breathe, and it circulates that through the lithium hydroxide canisters, and it filters out the, the impurities and, and the uh, carbon dioxide. Now, the concern here is the fact that they have the command service module system powered down, whether the LEM lithium hydroxide canisters will do this job. Now, uh, I don't think this is a problem yet, but they'll probably be keeping a very close watch on the amount of carbon dioxide that they're building up in the cabin to see if it is a problem. So, Leo, are these, uh, as I remember, I'm not sure of this, are the canisters interchangeable where you can use the command module canisters in the limb? That was the inference that McDivitt made. Yes, I don't think it's a problem with the number of canisters, uh, Wally. I think it's just the capacity of the limb system. The limb system was designed for two people, and we have three people surviving on it. Yeah, but uh, McDivitt also made the point, I don't think you were up with this at the time, that there's more than enough oxygen to supply this uh, requirement that they had. I believe he said six, four, uh, four or six pounds. Forty-eight pounds, and uh, so they use six plenty of oxygen for depressurization. So the only constraint then would be to clear out the impurities, the carbon dioxide. That's right. There's no shortage of oxygen. No. It's, the problem is uh, scrubbing it through the lithium hydroxide yeah. system. Yeah. And this, of course, is done with uh, an electrically driven compressor, which drives the uh, used gas uh, through the canisters, which has some back pressure, much like a little vacuum cleaner. Uh, and as a result, the back end of the vacuum cleaner gives you clean, uh, cleaned out gas. So you've taken, you've literally removed the carbon dioxide and water and uh, impurities. So their their concern is not with the amount of oxygen on hand, but uh, that they've got enough battery power there to, to run the to fan, to run the fan, mm -hmm. run the the oxygen back through the, the air, back through the uh, lithium hydroxide containers. All right, now, another question here on this uh, matter, the passive thermal control mode. Uh, the, uh, uh, as we know, 
all of you out there who have followed these flights in the past, and I assume most of you have, in going out to the moon and back because there's a, a temperature of, what is it, 450 minus or, or plus, depending on whether you're on the sunny or the shadow side of the sun. Uh, the, you can't stay in one position too long, or you bake on one side and freeze on the other. So they turn the spacecraft around slowly, one revolution of uh, an hour, I guess it is, isn't it? Or it's, uh, three degrees a second. Yeah. Three degrees a second. Uh, so that's one an hour, 360 and 60. Yeah. One a minute, 60, uh, 60 minutes. So it's a, uh, uh, well, anyway, they need the, the, uh, uh, RCS system, those little jets, to do that job. They can use these little ones on the, uh, well, there's, of course, our display of the rotary or rotisserie mode, as you can see on the screen, or I guess I'd like to call it the barbecue mode. It always confuses me to call it the rotisserie mode. But that way you end up uh, heating and cooling the opposite sides of the vehicle, so you have a universal heat path through it. But you can use the 